Hello, welcome to Accounting Hub. I am Professor George Scarping, PhD in Accounting, and today we will talk about priming conversion costs and fixed variable and mixed costs. First of all, priming conversion costs. If we go back to our cost specification, production costs, we have three uh, basic production costs direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead, or MOH. And then, prime cost. What prime cost is? Is the primary cost, often the direct cost. And it is direct materials plus direct labor. However, the most important one is the conversion cost. It is the cost to convert raw materials into finished goods. What do I need to convert raw materials into finished goods? I need direct materials and, sorry, I need direct labor and manufacturing overhead. So conversion cost, direct labor plus manufacturing overhead. Very, very important uh, topic for the process costing. We also have a video about process costing. And the last one, fixed variable and mixed cost. Fixed cost stay constant in total over a wide range of activity levels. For instance, ranks. I pay my rent. It doesn't matter if I am producing a lot or not. However, this, this facility that I am paying rent, yeah, I cannot produce the amount of units I want. I have a, a capacity, so I have a wide range. If I need to produce more than my full capacity, I need to rent a second facility, so I will change my fixed cost. Variable cost, changing total in direct proportion to changes in volume. For instance, raw material. If I produce only one unit, I need one, uh, one amount of raw materials. If I produce 10, Units, I will need to also have 10 times more raw material. So it is variable. Mixed costs contain both variable and fixed components. For instance, for instance, utilities. If we don't use anything, we pay a minimum or a fixed part of it. If we produce, if we use it a lot, then we pay this fixed amount plus variable based on use. It is uh, easier to understand it if we work with an Excel file. So this Excel file called variable, fixed, and mixed cost. If you want it, just go to our, uh, our description of this video and you have a link to this Excel file. Okay, so let's consider here. We have Let's, don't, let's not gonna work with variable cost now. So we have fixed cost, 35,000 per period, per month, for instance. It doesn't matter how many units I produce, my, very, my fixed cost will be the same. If we plot it in a, in a chart, let's come here. You already have it on your Excel file. So, fixed costs. And then, uh, select data here, units it is not here. However, it is the category here. Oh, much better. Fixed cost here, it doesn't matter how many units I produce. My fixed cost will be the same. Let's make it even better here. Let's delete the variable cost. Fixed cost, it doesn't matter how many units I produce. My fixed cost will be the same. However, if we are talking about long term, for instance, uh, no variable cost for now. Fixed cost, 35,000 units. However, the maximum units I can produce is 300. If I produce more than 300, my fixed cost will be 50,000 
dollars. Let me add here a line here, 350,000 or 301, more than 300, okay? So what do we have here? If we insert our chart, whoops, chart here. Then what do we have? Let's make it better. Select data, no units, no variable cost, and add it here. Here we have a step. So our fixed cost changing just like a step here or a stair. That is, we have a lot of different names here. So it is uh, what happens when we are talking about long term. So we can work with more than one level of fixed cost. Let's delete this 301 here. Okay. What about the variable? So let's consider here variable cost per unit, $100 per unit. If I produce nothing, no variable cost. If I produce 50, 5,000, that is 100 times 50 and so on. So let's have this chart here. Variable costs. Let's make it better. No units. However, the units is the Y chart. Here is what we have when we are talking about variable costs. It start at at origin here, zero or nothing, and then it goes with a, a linear function. It's our variable cost. And here, it doesn't matter if we are talking about short or long term, because let's consider here our variable cost 100. If we plot it in a chart, our function remains the same. Here, variable cost, our function remains exactly the same. Let's, let me clean it. Here and then it doesn't matter if we are talking about short term or long term, variable cost will be a linear function. What about mixed costs? Let's delete it here and mixed costs. Uh, for a fixed cost component, let's assume here $5,000 and the variable cost component is $60 per unit. How much will be my fixed cost? It will be the fixed component plus the variable component times units. We open paste this formula here and we have our numbers. And if we plot this number, Insert, let's plot it. Mixed costs, select data, horizontal category is here. Whoops. Oh, come on, here. And what do we have here? What is the difference here? We don't start our function in the origin. We don't start it on nothing or zero. We start it at the fixed component or five five thousand dollars and then it goes up just like a variable cost so we start here at five that is just like our fixed cost if we go back here the fixed cost also doesn't start at origin it start above origin the same here as the fixed cost so this first part here is the fixed amount this second one here is the variable amount. Okay, guys. So thank you so much. If you have comments, questions, uh, leave it in our YouTube video or email me at jscarping at gmail.com. And don't forget 
subscribe our channel and like this video. Have a very nice day.